was personally accompanying his guests to Egypt, but probably to the full-flight Paramses, the new capital of the country. Was Ramses II's most friendly and warm attitude to persuade the reserved king of the Hebrews to accept the invitation. However, an emergency stood in the way of the execution of the visit when the Hebrews king woke up one morning with hot feet. In the language of our modern times, we knew that he was inflamed feet temporarily postponed the visit and the Egyptians were informed. It was also said that a medical report of the king's condition would be sent about the developments in the king's health condition, according to which the time of the visit would be defined. But dealing with the topic of the visit told about the vision that the queen of Hita Buddha had had. She saw a person who talked to her in the name of God, saying, Swear by God is ninja in the disease of the feet's inflammation or burning goes and leaves his excellency safe. That he would have been both doors encrusted with lavish lazuli work from his father's Egypt. The king's feet did heal, and a message to Egypt said he had already left the city on his way to Egypt. Most probably, the two great men of the age had met in the permit's land and came together to her ramses. Unfortunately, that we have no exact evidence or information about that historic event. Something like a memorial monument in the Ramses or Hattis, for instance, perhaps such a monument was made but had disappeared as a result of the ravages of time. However, an Egyptian educational papyrus from Memphis tells about a light passage written by the great king of Hita in the ruler of Code, north of Syria, persuading him to Placed in preparations of going to Egypt to offer his greetings to Ramses II. Similarly, a deformed note was discovered in Thebes with an ideal opening of a message by any bishop one, the king of Karkamash. And all of these indications ascertain that the historic Egyptian Hegesis summit had actually taken place despite lack of definite documents or evidence. It should be understandable that relations between Kita and Egypt have been consolidated as a result of the exchange visits of the two countries' senior officials, notably the great king of Kita's visit, which was preceded by his son and crown prince visit, in addition to the intermarriage of Ramses II himself and the daughter of this king. Relations reached their top point on the official and personal levels when Kita Sil's third offered to marry a second daughter of his to Ramses II, which the latter accepted. The happy occasion was marked by the poet of the royal court of the gift of the goddess. In the coming edition of the programs, ladies and gentlemen, we shall produce those texts. Dear listeners, we come to the end of tonight's edition of the Weekly Text from Ancient Egypt. Weekly Text is a weekly program compiled to you by Dr. Mustafa. Best wishes comes to you from our sound engineer for tonight, Muhammad Abdelhaiz, and this is the most important wishing to you the best of luck.
فتنة دي يحمي أرضك وانتصر حل العجيب قم يا مصري مصري دايما فتنة دي يحمي أرضك وانتصر حل عجيب عمري شعبك ما انتصر إلا بإيديك عز مجدك ما ارتفع يوم إلا بيك عمر شعبك ما انتصر إلا بإيديك عز مجدك ما ارتفع يوم إلا بيك قوم يا مصري مصري دايما فتنة ديك نحمي أرضك وانتصر حل عديد قوم يا مصري مصري دايما فتنة ديك نحمي أرضك وانتصر حل عديد مر سلاحك على الأعادي للنهار تمشي في الأعداء تدمر والدمار نار سلاحك على الأعادي للنهار تمشي في الأعداء تدمر والدمار استرد الصحراء والأرض العمار من كفاحك من شجاعتك لانتصار قوم يا مصري مصري دايما فتنة ديك احمي ارضك وانتصر حل عديد قوم يا مصري مصري دايما فتنة ديك احمي ارضك وانتصر حل عديد اي نقطة دم من جسمك تسيل في طريق النصر تبقى لك دليل اي نقطة دم من جسمك تسيل في طريق النصر تبقى لك دليل قم يا مصري مصري دايما بدنا ديل نحن ارضك وانتصر حلي عديل قم يا مصري مصري دايما بدنا ديل نحن ارضك وانتصر حلي عديل المعارك انت فارس هل وحيد همتك عليا وقلبك من حديد المعارك انت فارس <تصفيق> Radio Cairo and post the main story. The Arab League backs Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. Time to speak to an investor. For example, those who declare an independence. Prime Minister Ibrahim Nahlet calls upon country members of the Francophone to take the Jackson mission to be a permanent member in the UN Security Council. French President Francois Hollande warns African leaders against trying to hang on to power. The Turkish army confirms that Daesh group terrorists have waged an attack at the border post close to the Syrian town of Kabul. And finally, Russia urges the European Union to lift sanctions against Moscow and Paris to wage it in Now, to more details. President Abu Fattah al-Sisi today confirmed that the Palestinian cause is a priority to the Egyptian foreign policy, stressing that the solution to the issue is the central point of achieving stability and support in the Middle East region. President al-Sisi also said that reaching a solution to the Palestinian conflict would help avoid all acts of violence on the hand of extremist groups. The Palestinian leadership is taken to the meeting today with the Palestinian president of the the president um, maintained Egypt's full support of the Palestinian cause until an independent Palestinian state is established so that its uh, capital is Jerusalem. He urged all uh, parties concerned to take steps so that would push the assault to the process forward. The Arab League today backed Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas plan to see QAnon endorsement for a timetable to declare an independence. <laughs> Recognizing the vulnerable Jewish nation. The statement said the minister would see the plan which 
which includes submitting an Arab proposal to the United Nations Security Council to end the Israeli occupation of Palestinian land. The Pentateu member bloc also backed Palestinian plans to seek membership in United Nations agencies and international courts. Earlier, Abbas told Arab League Foreign Minister in Cairo that he had put off such a step repeatedly in response to requests from Washington, but that we cannot wait any longer, as he was quoted. Abbas also warned that the Palestinians could take other steps, including joining the International Criminal Court if the Security Council rejects the resolution. Prosecutor General Hisham Barakat today assigned his technical bureau to prepare an integrated study on the legal reasons behind the verdict issued today by Cairo Criminal Court, acquitting Alfred President Hassan Mubarak as a threat of saving the way for an contest on the verdict. The verdict included also Mubarak's two sons, former Interior Minister Habib Ladli, his six aides, as well as fugitive businessman Hussein Salim. The court dismissed today a murder charge against Mubarak over the death of protesters during a 2011 resolution uprising sparking celebrations among supporters about Syria from opponents. Mubarak was also acquitted of a corruption charge but will remain in detention because he is serving a three-year sentence in a separate draft case. Dozens of protesters later gathered at an entrance into Cairo Sahir Square to protest the verdict. Six of Al Adli aides were acquitted in connection with the death of protesters during the revolt. Mubarak was later transported back to a Cairo military hospital where he is serving his sentence. Prime Minister Ibrahim Mahlub today called upon country members of the Francophone to support Egypt's nomination to be a member in the UN Security Council for the term 2016-2017 in a bid to let Egypt be the voice for Francophone countries. This came in Mehlet's speech before the 15th Summit of Francophone Countries, which opened in the Senegalese capital, Dakar, today. He also stressed Egypt's complete commitment to work on realizing peace and security in the African continent and the Middle East, pointing out that Egypt was the first to put the issue of curbing terrorism on the UN agenda, being a global threat to international peace and security. French President François Hollande warned African leaders today against trying to hang on to power, praising peaceful political transitions in Burkina Faso and Tunisia as a positive example to the continent. Addressing the African heads of state at the opening of a two-day summit of Francophone nations in the Senegalese capital of Dakar, Holland also aided that France would continue to support regional efforts to fight extremist militants. Holland said that the example of Burkina Faso should give a pause for thought to those who would like to stay in power by violating the constitutional order. Hollande urge, urged Burkina Faso's transitional authorities mandated to guide the West African nation to elections next year to concentrate on reconciliation. Cameroonian President Beya also called for greater African solidarity in fighting the militants in northern Nigeria, which borders the west of his own country. This news comes to you from Cairo. The Turkish army today confirmed that Daesh group terrorists had staged an attack at the border so close to the Syrian town of Kobani, but denied the car involved in the strike had come from its territory. The army said in a statement quoted by Turkish media, claims that the car involved in the ISIS attack on the Muri Sinek border post came from Turkey allies. No statement to that effect has any authority. Some pro-Kurdish media said earlier that a suicide attack had been staged by a vehicle that had arrived from Turkish territory, raising new questions about Turkey's commitment to fight Daesh group.
was quoted as saying by Intertax News Agency, the only thing we expect is for them to leave the meaningless sanctions spiral and move on to the path of lifting the sanctions and dropping the blacklist. This should allow us to drop our list. Spanish Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy said in Catalonia today that he would not allow any challenge to national, national unity on his first visit to the region since its symbolic vote on independence. Rajoy said in a speech to supporters of his conservative popular party in the region's main city of Barcelona, I will not allow challenges to the unity of Spain. No one should have to choose between being Catalan or Spanish. It was Rejoy's first visit to the wealthy northeastern region since the symbolic vote on independence, which Madrid tried to stop with a court injunction. Pope Francis today stood alongside the top Islamic clerk in a moment of highly symbolic contemplation at an Ottoman mosque as he visited Istanbul on his trip to the former capital of the Christian Byzantine world. On the second day of this visit to Turkey, Francis toured the key religious and historical sites in the city once known as Constantinople that was conquered by the Ottoman army in 1453. The visit of the Pope is seen as a crucial test of France's ability to build bridges between states amid the rampage by Daesh extremists in Iraq and Syria and concerns over the persecution, persecution of Christian minorities in the Middle East. The Baltic nation of Lithuania today unveiled what it billed as the world's largest ever coin pyramid ahead of its switch from the lightest currency. Today, forcefully broke up a student protected loan because one so had tied up the down the new presidential palace. The one for each one, that's an accident. Video footage of the police wearing body armor, the reason set to Australia to break.